Greetings programs, Atari here, you there. And as an object of curiosity, I've been looking for a way to uh, check the capacity on these little uh, rechargeable AA batteries. For reasons. Uh, and I stumbled upon Adam Welch's uh, battery capacity tester he built out of an Arduino Nano for a couple years ago. Um, Adam was uh, salvaging lithium-ion batteries from old laptop batteries and so forth. And uh, I didn't need anything quite that robust, so I took the basic design, the basic sketch, and I've adapted it into a AA checker. Uh, so, I'm going to use the same basic parts, uh, and I'll provide links in the doobly-doo for your convenience. Uh, but first, we're going to look at the circuit, and we're going to see how it works. We start with the battery that we want to test. From the positive terminal, we need to run the circuit into a current shunt. A current shunt is a resistor of a known value that we can use to test the effective voltage drop from one side to the other. Here we're going to use a 10 watt 1 ohm resistor so it'll be easy to measure. We'll need to run a probe line from each side of the shunt into an analog I.O. pin on the Nano so that we can compare the two values. From the shunt, we'll run the circuit through some kind of a load. This can be a power resistor, a motor, a fan, or even a lamp, so long as it'll run on 1.5 volts. From the load, we're going to attach our MOSFET. And what the MOSFET is going to do is it's going to take a signal from the Nano and toggle the circuit every few seconds so we can take readings over time. So to wire this, and wait, wait, let me, let me back this line up just a little bit so you can see more clearly. To wire this, let's run the circuit from the load into the drain pin on the MOSFET. We're going to run a signal wire from one of the digital pins on the Nano into the gate pin on the MOSFET to control the circuit, and then we'll run the source pin from the MOSFET to a common ground. The ground will connect to the analog ground pin on the Nano through a 10 kilo ohm resistor to protect the microcontroller from any kind of a voltage spike. This is highly unlikely in this device, but it's a good practice anyway then back into the negative terminal on the battery. And now let's uh, take a look at the sketch code. Adam's Arduino sketch is fairly simple. Basically, we're just going to invoke the library that drives the LCD, define a few variables, and perform Ohm's law calculations until the battery drains out. Here you can see where we've defined our pins, analog low and high for the shunt, and the digital signal pin for the MOSFET. This section defines all our variables for the calculations later, shunt resistance, reference voltage, and so forth. Make sure that you check your reference voltage between the 5 volt and the ground pins. Otherwise, your calculations may be off, and that'll give you faulty data back. I got a reading of 4.68 volts from my Nano, but your mileage may vary. For AA nickel metal hydride batteries, they really shouldn't be allowed to deplete less than 7 to 800 millivolts, so we're going to stop our test at about 900 millivolts just to be safe. This isn't going to allow us to get the crazy high capacity ratings that the manufacturers advertise, but we are going to get a better real world kind of figure. Now, here's where we start our actual program. We have some serial output so we can read the test data as it comes out, then we set our digital signal pin to low. When it goes high, it will close the circuit and we'll be able to collect some data. Then we begin our loop. First, we check to make sure that the battery isn't drained out yet. Then we send a signal to the MOSFET to close the circuit by switching the digital pin to high. We'll measure the voltage on both sides of the shunt, then divide the difference by the known resistance of the shunt to get the actual current going through the circuit. We'll do a quick conversion in units on the current and multiply it by time to get the measured capacity of the battery at that point, and then display it. Rinse and repeat. Once the voltage drops below our specified threshold, then we'll jump down to the coda that displays the final results of the test and turns off the circuit. Now that we've got an idea of the design and the code, let's see what parts we're going to need and build this sucker. First we have our breadboard. 
This is, well, I guess a collectible at this point. This is a Radio Shack 276-001 breadboard uh, that has the integrated power terminals, but you can use any old breadboard just as well. For our shunt, we're going to use this 10 watt 1 ohm ceramic resistor. To connect the battery, we'll use this single cell AA battery holder. Of course, I've already soldered a couple of leads off the terminal so that I can actually use it. For the load, I'm going to use this 10 watt 1.5 ohm power resistor, but you can, again, use a fan or a lamp or, or whatever, as long as it's 1.5 volts or less. We're going to need a handful of these little terminal blocks to connect the lead wires together, so we'll throw those in the pile. Going to need an IRF3205 MOSFET to handle the switching in the circuit. 10 kilo ohm resistor as voltage protection for the nano. Of course, we have the nano, or in this case, a cheap Chinese clone. Now, I found out the hard way that these will likely need a different driver as they use a different onboard chipset than the FTDI that Genuine Arduino uses. Uh, I'll put an article on AirborneSurfer.com explaining how to install those drivers just in case you need it. Final piece to the puzzle is this Nokia 5110 screen module, and I'll show you how to wire that in as we put this thing together on the breadboard. You'll need the library for this module, and I'll put a link to that in the write-up on AirborneSurfer.com as well. And of course we'll need some assorted jumper wires to connect everything as necessary. So let's get this thing together. Uh, first, let's get the lead wires from the battery holder screwed into one of these terminal blocks so we can attach it to the breadboard. Just like the circuit we drew earlier, the positive terminal is going to connect to the shunt resistor and to the high analog pin, which is A0, on the nano. At the other end of the shunt, connect a jumper to the low analog pin, A1, on the nano. For the load, I like to have a little space here because of all the components that are going to be installed in really close together. So I'm going to attach a separate terminal block to each of the load's leads. Plug them in like so. Take a second and see that you've got your spacing right on the breadboard because we're going to need to install everything according to the pins on the MOSFET. The left pin here is the gate, then the drain, than the source, and the whole thing is dependent on how you wire this part. Plug the MOSFET into the breadboard so that the drain pin lines up with the lead coming from the load. Run a jumper from the digital signal pin, D10, to the gate pin on the MOSFET. For the ground, I like to buy myself a little space by running a jumper from the source pin on the MOSFET to an adjacent clear line on the breadboard. Now we have a sort of a, a ground bus, if you will, that we can connect all of our common ground lines to. Go ahead and run a jumper from the ground bus back to the negative terminal on the battery. Now, add your 10 kilo ohm resistor from the ground bus to an adjacent row and from there back to the ground pin on the nano. Lastly, we need to connect the screen module. Make sure you've got plenty of space on the breadboard, and test fit it to be sure. Then, just connect the digital pins to the appropriate pins on the screen, as shown here. Now that we're all wired up, let's test this thing out. I'm going to throw a standard alkaline battery from the Horror Fright on here just to make sure everything works. It doesn't really matter the chemistry though, we're really just concerned with the voltage and the capacity for testing purposes. Fantastic! Looks like everything works, so now I can solder everything to a circuit board and have a proper tool. Now this little device is going to come in handy on the next project I've got uh, lined up, so be sure and hit that subscribe button and uh, don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you'll be able to see exactly what I've got up my sleeve. In the meantime, let me know you like this video by leaving a comment down in the doobly-doo, and I'll see you again in a few days. Tally ho, y'all.